The elemental halogens, especially Cl2 or Br2, add to alkenes to give vicinal dihalides. And in this reaction, one of the atoms of the elemental halogen acts as an electrophile and the other as a nucleophile. Unlike the previous examples we've seen, this mechanism does not involve a discrete carbocation, but as we'll see, it does still proceed with kind of pseudo-Markovnikov selectivity based on the location of positive charge in a key intermediate in this process. The key intermediate, by the way, has a structure that's reminiscent of an epoxide with a halogen atom part of a three-membered ring with a formal positive charge. This positively charged halonium ion is really the key to understanding the stereochemical and site selectivity course of electrophilic halogenation reactions. Halogenation is interesting because the halogens at first glance don't look like great electrophiles. Thermodynamically, one reason these molecules can act as electrophiles is that they have low bond dissociation enthalpies. For example, the bond dissociation enthalpy for the bond linking the two chlorines in Cl2 is 58 kilocalories per mole, which is quite low. A good benchmark for bond dissociation enthalpy is about 100 kilocalories per mole for a CH bond. And for Br2, because the atoms are larger, the bond is even weaker. This is only 46 kilocalories per mole. These low bond dissociation enthalpies mean that exchanging the CLCL or BRBR bond for bonds to carbon is going to, in general, be thermodynamically favorable. This is fundamentally a thermodynamic argument, but we still need a mechanism to get from the starting materials to the products of addition. And the basis of that mechanism is the low energy sigma star orbital for the bond connecting the two X atoms. This is a kinetic concern since orbital overlap in the reactants is most strongly related to the energy of the transition state and how quickly the energy of the reactants goes up as the reaction proceeds. To understand why the energy of the XX sigma star orbital is relatively low, we can think about an alternative resonance form for this molecule in which we push the pair of electrons in the XX bond onto one or the other of the X atoms, and of course, it doesn't matter which one. In this hypothetical resonance form, we've got a positively charged halogen, which doesn't look great, and a negatively charged halide anion, which actually looks okay. Because we can think of this X minus as a good leaving group, it's possible to think about the other X atom as having kind of a virtual partial positive charge. This means it can act as an electrophile, accepting a pair of electrons as the other X atom departs. This is the essence of the reactivity of X2 in these halogenation reactions. Some nucleophile in this less than an alkene donates electron density to one of the X atoms, while the other departs with a pair of electrons. We'll see the same type of reactivity in reactions of aromatics, which also contain nucleophilic double bonds, in a later lesson. In an alkene context, electrophilic halogenation involves the addition of X2 across the pi bond of an alkene. The products of this reaction are vicinal dihalides, and they're called vicinal because the new carbon X bonds have a 1-2 relationship. There's no site selectivity issue here since the bonding pattern at both carbons of the alkene is the same. Both of them just gain one CX bond while the pi bond breaks. It is important here to pay attention to the stereochemistry. Notice that we've left all four carbons of the alkene in the same orientation in the product, and we see that one of the halogens is above the plane of the alkene, and the other is below the plane of the starting alkene. This corresponds to anti-addition, and this is the rule for electrophilic halogenation reactions. No syn products are observed. This reaction is stereospecific. That means that if we use, for example, cis-2-butene rather than trans-2-butene in an electrophilic halogenation reaction, we'll arrive at a different diastereomer of the product. The reaction still involves anti-addition, but the configuration at this stereocenter, what we've labeled carbon-2, is different. Mechanistically, this reaction type is distinct from the electrophilic additions involving H+, or analogs, that we've seen already. The key difference is that the electrophile bears a lone pair that can coordinate back to the alkene. The first step of the mechanism is then kind of an unconventional electrophile association step, where there, where there is coordination of the alkene to the halogen atom and departure of X with a pair of electrons, but at the same time, a pair of electrons on the electrophilic X atom is donated back to the alkene. As a result of this, two bonds to X are formed simultaneously to both carbons of the alkene. This electron flow leads to the formation of an interesting intermediate containing a positively charged halogen atom within a three-membered ring. 
stereochemically, because both bonds to the X atom were made simultaneously, the methyl groups maintained the orientation that they had in the starting alkene. They're trans in the starting material, and they're trans in this halonium ion intermediate as well. This step has also given rise to X minus, and we can think of the situation now as analogous to nucleophilic substitution of an epoxide or ring opening of an epoxide. X minus adds at one of the two carbons. These two carbons are incidentally homotopic, so it doesn't matter which one it adds to at this point, they're equivalent, and the carbon X bond breaks toward the X atom, leading to the product. This step is a classic SN2 ring opening step, and it helps us see why anti-addition is the rule in halogenation reactions. This SN2 step proceeds with inversion of configuration at the electrophilic carbon atom that's attacked. For this reason, the nucleophilic halogen atom, for this reason, the nucleophilic halogen atom, this one, ends up on the opposite side of the plane formed by the carbons of the alkene from the electrophilic halogen atom, this one. Cl- and Br- are relatively weak nucleophiles, and we can take advantage of this by using solvent quantities of a nucleophile that takes the place of X- minus in what's called a cohalogenation. It's called cohalogenation because we hal halogenate along with the addition of a distinct nucleophile used in solvent quantities, often an alcohol, ROH. The first step of the mechanism here is exactly the same. Electrophilic addition of X to the alkene gives a halonium ion. But there is a difference between this substrate and the one we looked at on the last slide. Now there's a site selectivity issue, since the two carbons of the alkene are not equivalent. This means that the two carbons within the halonium ion are not equivalent. And we face a question as to which of these carbons the nucleophile attacks, the less substituted carbon through electron flow like this, or the more substituted carbon through electron flow like this. Well, think back to our studies of the protonated epoxide, which is very similar to this case, with OH plus replacing X plus. In that case, we noted that because the more substituted position bears more partial positive charge than the less substituted position, it will react preferentially with the nucleophile. The exact same principle is in play here. The more substituted carbon, despite being more sterically hindered, bears more positive charge. For this reason, it reacts preferentially with the nucleophile. An SN2 substitution, or ring opening, of the halonium ion gives rise to a product in which the nucleophile ends up connected to the more substituted carbon, rather than the less substituted carbon. When an alcohol or water is used as the nucleophile, we end up with one halo, two alkoxy or hydroxy products. And here again, because the SN2 ring opening proceeds with inversion of configuration, anti-addition is observed. That's not necessarily an issue here, because carbon-1 isn't a stereocenter, but in general, this can be an issue. And just to hammer this point home, keep in mind that this addition of the nucleophile to the halonium ion is really reminiscent of epoxide opening an acid. In fact, the same is true if X minus is used as the nucleophile. We can't tell the difference between the products of addition to one carbon or the other because two X atoms get added in any case, but the same principle applies to that reaction as well. The structural analogy here between X plus and OH plus in a protonated epoxide is really the key to recognizing this.